27 chapter. Ask everyone to get your Bibles. Acts 27 chapter, starting at verse 21. Once you have it, please stand. Acts 27 chapter, and we'll be starting from verse 21. Once you have it, please stand. Amen. And it reads, but after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, man, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and occurred this disaster and loss. Now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul, you have you must be bought back. You must be bought before Caesar, and indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. Told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. We're gonna skip down to verse 31, same chapter. Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, "Unless these men stay in the ship." You cannot be saved. And the last verse we'll read is verse 44. And the rest, of, and the rest some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. May I, God add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his work. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for the reading of the word of God today. God, God's word is, is a lamp unto our feet, light unto our path. Amen? Say it again. God's word is a lamp unto our feet, light unto our path. <clears throat> and if anyone wants to know how to be led by God, it's through his word. Amen? So if you, let's stop the trivial. If you want to be led by God, it's through his word. Amen? It's not, I know people have all, you know, we have all of this. And I know that there are gifts in the church, but, uh, but, but the, the perfect gift is here, which is the word of God. This is God's word. You can't miss doing the word. Amen. You can't miss doing the word. You know, you, you got some people out there that say that they are prophets and, and are not. Amen. So if you're not if you're not in the word, then you will allow you will allow people to come and prophesy over you and say that that's a word from God. What and it is in and it is in total opposite of what God's word said. Say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, amen. your directions amen. is in the word. Amen. Not in an individual. Amen. And again, you know, I don't despise the gifts of God. I believe that God worked through prophecy. I believe that God worked through speaking in enough tongues. I believe that God worked through miracles. I believe in all the gifts. Amen. Amen. But I believe that the gifts lines up with the word. Amen. You tell me you got a gift if, you, if, if it's forfetched. From the word. Amen. My gift got a liner with the word. Say amen. My gift got a liner with the word. And I thank God for, for the scripture. This is it. The scripture, the scripture is the is the the borderline for the saints. This is this is how we follow God by following the scripture. Amen. Thank God for you today. Thank God for the word of God, the devil. Let's get into the scripture today. I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna uh I wanna we were talking from a series of we was talking from the series um from um the eleventh the eleventh chapter, the tenth chapter, was it tenth chapter of Second Corinthians. And we were talking from the series of there, and I wanna kinda of try and line the scripture up for you today. Okay? Second turn to Second Corinthians. Thank God for everybody in their respective place. 
thank God for our church in Charlotte, my daughters and, and my son-in-law that, that overseeing the church in Charlotte, brought down their guests with them, and thank God for them. Amen? God bless you. God bless you, and uh, we really do give God pray for everybody in their respective places. And Amen. Carol, how you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Family, love y'all. God bless you. Amen. Um, second, second Corinthians 11th chapter. Just 11th, 10th chapter. Okay. 10th chapter. Amen. What verse am I in? Huh? All right. I start from the first. Uh, let's start from the third. Let's start from the third verse. For though we walk in the flesh, for though we walk in the flesh, for though we walk how? In the flesh. For though we walk how? In the flesh. Now this is a different word from, 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 uh, it's a different, it's a different word in the flesh. The thing about, the thing about our English language, once, once we say one word, we say love, we have, we just got one definition. But when you start talking about, when you start talking about the, the, the scripture, the, the, the Hebrew scripture, when they say just, if, if they say the word love, it has three, four different meanings. Agape, you kind of like know that, right? Agape, phileo, uh, what's the other one? Uh, eros, okay? So when you start talking uh, from, from the scripture text in the Hebrews, it, it, their language is m way broader than our language. So I want to talk from from. From that, I want you to look at the third verse. It says, for though we walk in the flesh. When the scripture says, the Bible says, when the scripture says, uh, it says, though we walk in the flesh. In the flesh is just in these earthly bodies. In the earthly bodies. Okay? It's not talking about a mindset. It's talking about though we walk in the flesh. You can't inhabit the earth unless you have a fleshy body. The only way God could have came down and redeemed us, he had to have an earth suit. So he walked in the flesh. Amen. He walked in a fleshly body uh, from the virgin birth of Mary. And, and he, he came through the wounds of Mary and he had to have an earth suit. So that's the only way he could have redeemed us. So this scripture is saying, Paul is writing to the Corinthians saying, he said, now, though we walk in the flesh, he said, we do not war, we do not war after the flesh. Okay? Now, that's another word. We do not war after the flesh. Now, that word, after the flesh, is talking about a mindset. We do not war after the flesh. Other words, the desires of, of this body. The desires, the mindsets of this body. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay? And we sung a song today, uh, Sister Banks and I, and with the praise team, and you sung it, and said, this mean what? War. And so you got to know how to war. You got to know how to go to battle. So though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. Every child of God, you got to know where the battle is. Amen. The battle is not with flesh and blood. So stop fighting against people. Some of y'all ain't got delivered from that yet. You've been saved too long to be fighting against people. Amen. If you've been saved over five years, you ought, you ought to have been got victory over people. You, you sitting there talking about you don't like nobody, don't like this. It's been five years ago. You still don't like them? Amen. Amen. I mean, I know sometimes people do you wrong and people hurt you, but you got to touch somebody and say, move on. Move on. Amen. God is, look, look, I, I'm, I'm in the flesh just like you in the flesh. I've been hurt just like you've been hurt. But if we're going to obey the word, regardless of how I feel, I got to forgive. All right. So it don't matter about how I feel about them, I got to forgive them. Say amen. amen. And touch your neighbor and say, this message is just for you today. Just for you today. Yeah. And stop trying to preach it to somebody else. Amen. 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 
God ain't, God ain't never gave us the word so we can shuffle it. He never gave us the word so we can shuffle it. Amen. Amen. He always give us the word so that we can impart that word in ourselves. People think they get a word for other people. And you can't even get a word for yourself. All right, I'm moving. For though we walk in the flesh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Don't let this, this lifestyle, or don't let the Christian lifestyle become a war against the flesh. Don't even look at your pastor in the flesh. Don't look at one another in the flesh. Listen, I, I, dare, I dare not stand before you and thinking, thinking of myself in the flesh. I'm so seeking after what God wants to say to you. Tell Sometimes I get what for trying to seek after God. My passion goes so deep trying to hear what God is saying. Seek after what God is saying. So, Because I know this is not about flesh. This is not about flesh. Stop looking at people in the flesh. You got to grow up and start seeing people how God wants you to see them. I'm going to say that again. You got to grow up and start seeing people how God wants you to see them. Amen. Amen. How many know there's a way that God wants you to see people? You know, the only time in the scripture where you ever seen God touch somebody two times to heal them is that blind man. You remember that? You know, another time he tell a blind man, go, go, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Or he, he touched uh, 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 blind Barnabas. He said, go show yourself to the priest. But this particular blind man, he, the Bible said he taught the blind man. The blind man, when he, he, he encountered, uh, encountered the contact with the blind man, he touched him. And he asked him, said, what you want me to do? The blind man said, I, I want to see. He touched him. And then Jesus asked him, how do you see? You know what he said? I see men like trees. How I many know you don't to see men like trees? You devalue men when you start seeing them like trees. Uh, amen. And so Jesus said, no, you're seeing men wrong. You see wrong. You got to see men like men. Now what that means is God said, I want you to see men like I see men. Amen. That's a maturing process. You got that? That's a maturing process when you start seeing people like God see them. Don't even see what they've been through. Just see them like God see them. Don't even see them what they're going through. Just see them how God see them. Amen. 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 And so God said, how do you see men? Then he said, I see men like men. I see men like, he said, I see men like men. Over what he was saying, now I see right. When I start seeing people like God want me to see them. Can you shout amen? That's a maturing process, isn't it? And you'd be surprised at how many saved people don't see people how God wants you to see them. And that's why we can't love folk because we can't see people how God wants us to see them. When you, when you really start loving people, you're going to start seeing people how God wants you to see them. You're going to, you're going to see people how God sees them. Can you shout amen? You'll stop, you'll stop looking at all their little, you know, infirmities, all their little inadequacies. You'll stop, you'll stop seeing people like that. Can they shout amen? That's why, you know, love, 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 love better than things. Love, it, love never stop loving. Y'all didn't get that. I said love never stop loving. Love don't never stop loving. Love, love, love through faults. Love, love through a whole bunch of mess. I like this take. Love, hope it. Thank you. It hope it, it got. It, it don't never stop hoping. Even though I know you're going through something, I know God's gonna bring you out. Boy, that's good right there. Hey, hey, amen. How many really see that? How many really? How many? How many really? You, you living that out? I don't care what an individual will go through. If they go, come to God, God is going to bring them out. Say amen. Love, hope is all the time. It don't never give up on people. Love never give up on people. Good. Love never fail. Give me a shout amen. So God wants us to see how, how he sees. So we, we don't, even though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Our warfare is not after the flesh. Amen. 
But once you can get this, you'll be a free person. Whom the sun set free. Okay, y'all ain't got that one. I said, whom the sun set free. You got some free people, but they ain't free indeed. Mm, mm, mm. I say, whom the sun set free. See, people get saved, the sun that set you free. But why need to say the free indeed? Whom the sun set free is what? Free indeed. You accept Jesus when the sun set you free, you free from the penalty of sin. And this is the thing, this is the thing here. you know, just take a, I, I remember about these two convicts, they, they was in prison. I can't call their name. Two convicts was in prison in Alcatraz, and they escaped from Alcatraz, something that nobody had never done. So they escaped from Alcatraz. And, and when they, they made their escape, and, and, you know, it went all over the world and talking about these two men, how they escaped from Alcatraz. But how many know when they escaped from Alcatraz, Touch and David said they were free, but they were not free indeed. You still ain't getting it. You got some people free, but they ain't free indeed. Amen. Because you still got stuff hanging over your shoulder. You still got to watch out for everybody. You've been, the, the sun that made you free, but you, 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 got, some, you got some stuff that, you, it, that started hounding you. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they were free. But they weren't free indeed. Because Pharaoh was behind them. You remember they got to the Red Sea? Yep, you only get that. Remember they got to the Red Sea? Ask me, did they come out of Egypt? Were they free? Mm -hmm. They came out of Egypt. God had set them free. But how many know they weren't free indeed? Because now they get, they get, to, the, they get to the Red Sea. Now they, they biked up. And who was behind them? Pharaoh was right behind them. The country is strong. Can they shout amen? And the Bible said, now watch me. In order for them to get free indeed, they had to do what God tell them to do. You, have, you got to touch your neighbor and say, you got to keep obeying God. Even when God done made you free, you got to keep obeying God. Can this out amen? amen? Some people think when they get saved, they just go into heaven so they start living how they want to live. Uh, touch them again and say, you got to keep obeying God. Amen. That's right. If you're going to be free indeed. The text says when God commanded Moses, stretch forth your rod. They stretched forth their rod and the Bible said the Red Sea, it divided and they walked across on dry land. Amen. They walked across on dry land. And then they got on the other side. Guess who tried to follow them? Uh-huh. Guess who tried to follow them? They tried to follow. But when you, get, when you start trusting God, everything can't follow you. Everything can't enter into your destiny. Can they say amen? Everything can't go where you go. Some stuff going to get drowned <laughs> because they don't know it was a miracle that brought you over. Amen. That's why I ain't worried about everybody loving me. Everybody can't go with me. Amen. There are going to be some people that oh, you don't experience too. That, you know, they thought they were going, you thought they, that they were going to be with you forever. Mm, but they had to go their own way. Say amen. 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 Sometimes, sometimes you got to go where God told you to go. And sometimes it might cause them to pardon a best friend. Mm, some relatives might have to depart. Uh, but you got to go where God told you to go. Say amen. And whom the son set free. Free indeed. Pharaoh's army come across there and tried to go, go after them. In the Bible, you know the story. And when they got into, into the Red Sea, he's trying to go after um, the Israelites. The Bible said that sea closed up on them. How many know then Miriam picked up a tamarind? Because <laughs> I'm free indeed. Can they say amen? And then Moses gave them a prophetic word. And, and to, before they died, he looked at them and said, see that Pharaoh and his army? Look at them for the last time this day. Can they shout amen? Because you won't see that enemy no more. I just gave you a good word to prophesy in your own life. Can they shout amen? Uh -uh, uh -uh, I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to give you an opportunity to go ahead and prophesy. That enemy that's running you down, that enemy that's keeping you bound and stuff. Come on, just tell that, that, say that thing right there, I ain't going to see this no more. I got some other enemy, but that one right there, Pharaoh and his army, it done. Can this out? Amen. Amen. So that's, that's, that's been our series and been our topic. Even though we are in the flesh, we don't walk after the flesh. So turn to your neighbor and say, you got to learn how to walk. Fourth verse, 
For the weapon of, your, of our warfare are not what? Carnal. For the weapons of our warfare are not. I'm a happy man. I am, man. I'm a happy man. Because I don't fight that folk. I ain't got no carnal attitude. My, my, I'm a happy man. You can be mad at me as you want to. I'm for real. I ain't playing. I ain't, I ain't trying to be I, all bigoted and arrogant and all that. No, I'm just a free man. Because I don't have time to be having, having carnal people to get me carnal. Carnal means thinking with my own precepts. My own way of thinking, carnal. When, you, when you're a carnal man, you, you, you're a carnal person think in their, with their own way of thinking. The difference between spiritual man and a carnal man is the carnal man thinks their own way of thinking and a spiritual man thinks God's way of thinking. Did you get it? Okay. A natural man is a man that, is a person that's not saved. Now you're going to pick a natural man up in the scripture in Corinthians 3rd chapter, 1 first, first Corinthians 3rd chapter, the scripture is going to talk about a, a natural man, a carnal man, and a spiritual man. So the next time you read the scripture in there, understand what those three pe persons are. A spiritual man is a man, it's talking about a mindset, is a man or a woman that, that thinks like God thinks or that seek out the God way of thinking. A, a carnal man is a man that only, only live by the way he thinks. You know, what I feel, uh, this how I feel about it. And a, and a natural man is just a, a man that is an unsaved man. He ruled by his, he just ruled by the old, the old man. Amen. He can't think like God. A common man can have a mind transformed, form, but a natural man can't. Because a natural man is not saved. Amen. So you can be a common person, a saved person, but common. Amen. Amen. Did you get it? So you got to learn how to walk. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal? But mighty through who? God. God way of thinking through the pulling down of what? God. If you're going to get a stronghold put out, you got to do it through God. You can't take stronghold and tell me, and tell me you know, you, you, you might, and, and, and try to strong on a stronghold. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If you, if, if, a stronghold don't come overnight. A stronghold come after we have indulged in it year after year after year. Time and time and time. Amen. And so therefore, now when, when, when that thing gets your attention, you try to go break it. No wonder it's so hard to break. No wonder it's so hard to break how I feel about a person. Because I've been doing it all my life. If somebody did me wrong, I'm mad at them. I'm going to get you. I ain't got too many amen. amen. I know you don't want nobody to know you think like that, but I got you. I got you today. I won't ever forgive you. I'll come to church with you and shout with you, but I won't forgive you. Because that's how we always live. And it becomes a stronghold. Some people, some people it's just hard to forgive. Because they've never operated in forgiveness. Man, they got some stuff when they, when, when they were young that they were so hard for them to forgive. They heard about forgiveness, but they really haven't operated in forgiveness. Did I say that right? They heard about forgiveness, but haven't operated in forgiveness. In order for you to understand the forgiveness that God requires from us, you have to first operate in it. And if you're going to operate in forgiveness, I know everybody, those of you that have operated in forgiveness, I know you're going to say amen to this. You cannot base it on your feelings. Forgiveness is not based on how you feel. The reason why you forgive a person is because God told you to do it. You know what make me forgive a person quick when I think about how much God done forgave me? I'm for real on that one. I know y'all we just want to say it, but I'm telling I'm talking about God been good to me. I know some of y'all probably ain't sinned as much as I've sinned it. Because <laughs> I sin a lot, that's why I praise a lot. <laughs> God had to forgive me for a whole lot. So it's those of you that God had to forgive for a little bit, I know why you throw your hands and say, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because you just be forgiven for a little bit. But those of us that have been given for a lot. You, you be wondering, why are you looking at me? I'm about to give God some praise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, and then you know that God never forgave you for a lie. You're not ashamed of how you glorify him. Because nobody don't know like you really know. Preach good, Bishop. I said, no one knows, how, knows like you really know what God has really delivered you from. I know y'all ain't, boy. Go ahead and tell a neighbor, God to deliver me from some stuff that I'm not even willing to share with everybody. I know you looking good and you're looking good and got the thing looking on that side, but how, boy, how many can, can really testify that God did deliver me from some stuff? Some stuff that I would have did, but he delivered me from it. And I don't even want to tell nobody what I even thought. We, hey, whether y'all realize, whether y'all realize, whether y'all realize this or not, I'm gonna tell you what God gave me so much to live from. Whether you realize this or not, we are some depraved people. Okay, let me break it down a little bit more because some of y'all don't know what depraved means. Depraved means we got we we sinful. We are utterly sinful people. I know you saved and you look good and God done deliver you from this stuff and you know you try to do what's right and all. But but you just got to admit it. If you ever gonna be an overcomer, you got to know how to pray. We really are. Even when the Holy Ghost uses us on the day, watch the mindset and the stuff come up out of you the next day. Okay. All right. All right. You know, once I realize how to pray, I am. I know I got to totally depend on God. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody kept me from killing a joker but God. Ain't nothing kept me from murdering a person but God. I know y'all look at me, but bitch, you so nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say the same thing about y'all. Y'all so nice. Mm -hmm. You look like that, but that, but only you knows what. <laughs> That rascal that in you. And you know it take the Holy Ghost to keep us? It take the, we, we walk in the flesh, but we don't walk after the flesh. For if you're going to lie to walk, the weapons of our warfare are not coming. But they are mighty through God through the pulling down of stronghold. I know people want to walk around here and they say, Oh, I just love my wife. I just love my husband. I just, yeah, 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 yeah. Put on a good show. They ain't got to make you mad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I just love y'all. I just love you. you, you all that hate, this stuff. You have to keep that stuff down by the Holy Ghost. I know you know the same thing. But if the Holy Ghost don't help you, you'll be wanting to do what your flesh want to do. We're, we're some depraved people and sometimes I think when people get saved they forget about who they really are I know, I know you, we got to see who we are in God but you can't forget about that old crazy joker that ain't, that ain't he ain't been annihilated yet mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Have you ever been saved and wanted to drink and party? Came to church Sunday and just got down. I mean, Holy Ghost field, shot around the church, and then next week. I know, I know we say, well, they ain't, they ain't got nothing to do with me because I've been delivered from it. But when I first got saved, man, I thought I had to have me a drink. I used to drink every day. And, and sometimes we forget how depraved we really are. You say, but you got to still deal with an old ugly you. And I know you don't even let everybody know what come on your mind. Come on, I already know. And that's the scripture. The scripture gonna let you know it. Amen. And so, and so many people can't fight because. They, 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 they get beat down so much by their depraved nature until they got a guilty conscience. So now you can't praise God out, out, out of, a, of a free country because we done been beat down so much out of that guilty conscience. Because you don't understand who you really are. 
I don't care how Holy Ghost feel you are. There was a there was a there was a depraved you that gonna try to rise up. Amen. Ain't gonna feel like coming to church on some Sundays. Amen. Ain't gonna feel like reading the Bible on some days. Amen. Ain't gonna feel like praying when you know you got to pray. Amen. Ain't gonna feel like loving people when you know you're supposed to love them. Amen. Tell a lie when you know you're supposed to lie. For the women of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of what? Stronghold. If you're going to pull down stronghold, you, got, you can only do it through God. Amen. That's how you're going to do it. You can't do it by your strong effort. I'm a strong woman. I'm a strong black woman. No matter how strong black woman you are, you got to be in God if you're going to pull down stronghold. I'm a strong black man. You better be in God. You can, be, you can be a strong white man or a strong whoever. Amen. Green man, brown man. Amen. But you better be in God if you're going to pull out a stronghold. Can you say amen? It doesn't matter. It don't, if we're going to do it, if we're going to do this thing in him, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through the pulling down of what? Stronghold. Look at this fifth verse. Casting down imagination. Now that'll preach right there. Every sin starts with a thought. Ooh, Jesus. Don't move fast. Touch your neighbor and say, you're supposed to be here today. Mm -hmm. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. How many know your mind can go some crazy places? See what I'm talking about? Y'all be making me, when y'all be hollering, amen, hallelujah on this, I be thinking y'all just as phony. If I were preaching about prosperity, yeah, amen, hallelujah. God gonna give me that, God gonna. Casting down imagination, that mind, that mind, boy. Oh, even you get saved, you got to watch what that mind said. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can this shout amen? amen? By the renewing of your mind. How do I renew my mind? By taking God's word. By taking God's word and renewing my mind. Not what I think and not how I feel. Not, not, not problematically in my mind. Uh, whatever God says, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. amen. That's how you're going to cast down imagination. And every what? High thing. That exalted itself against what? The knowledge of God. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. I taught on this on Tuesday. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The devil be speaking some, some high thing to people's mind. And, it, and then the devil tell you that you're in the word. I ain't got to do what Bishop do. I ain't got to do what the other saints do. I can come to church when I want to. I can do this. I can go out and sit around all these people. But I ain't, I ain't drinking. I ain't smoking. And God completely told us to separate ourselves. You know, you can't, you can't come from out. Um, you can't come. You can't, you can't leave the world until you die. Amen. But it don't mean that I got, I, th th don't mean that I got to be cohabitors with people that are, 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 are doing um, uh, sinful things. Say amen. amen. Then I, I'm going to drive myself up. Why am I going to drive myself up in a place that I know I'm supposed to be? That's a mindset. That's a thought. If I go to a club, listen at me. If I go to a club, I'm going to the club because I got something else on my mind. I ain't going to no club to my no hallelujah Jesus leave me. Come on, talk to Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. I'm, I'm not going to a club because hallelujah Jesus leave me. Oh, when I get there, man, I'm a preacher with him. If I'm going to a club, I'm going to I'm going to a club. I got some on my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm, I'm going there. If I pull up in that club, I'm a dress clubby. You didn't put on no sacrifice though. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't no put on a sacrifice stuff in no long dress. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and so, you know, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing. I, I watch all that stuff. I watch, I watch how I, I watch how I intermingle with stuff. People say, well, there ain't no sin. Well, it ain't of God either. Amen. Amen. I've been invited to a lot of little, I've been invited to a lot of little places. Come out, come out, Bishop. You know, come out, Bishop. Come out, come over to my place and see my bar. Yeah, come out. I got a table for you. You and your wife. Yeah. I'm, oh. You know, this church world and got so worldly. We are. We your church and got so worldly. I'm 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 listening, listening, man. People like but the scripture right. But that word is right. Come ye out from amongst them and be separated. But uh, yeah, listen, the, the, the world done creeped up in the church. And, and, and we're not aware of it, man. We're still acting just like the world. Please say amen. amen. If we're not aware of it, we're still acting just like the world act. Amen. And so, so we have to watch how we walk. We got to watch wh- how, how the enemy try to influence us to, to you know, well, you know, I can do this, but because yeah, it ain't no sin, but it's so close to it. Be so close to it that you trip, you fall all over in it. Amen. Casting down the imagination, every high thing that is out of against the knowledge of God. Watch this. And bring it into what? Captivity. Every what? Thought. Bring it into captive. Or captivity. Every what? Thought. That's good right there. That's good. Bring every thought into captivity. But just imagine if you bring every thought into captivity. Isn't that good? Just imagine if the enemy come bring a high thing in your mind and, and you bring it into captivity. Just imagine how peaceful your life will be. Just imagine some place you wouldn't be. Some things you wouldn't have done. Because anything we do first got to come from the, the thinking. As a man think it, they become it. A man become what he thinks. Come on, let's preach good. I say a man, a woman, they become what they think. If you're thinking it every day, you're going to become it. You just, just wait on every opportunity to fulfill it. Please holler amen. You got to say amen to that. If a man is bound by pornography, it's just a moment of time for he fulfill what he's thinking. The reason why we haven't fulfilled it is because we didn't have the opportunity. It's in the church. I told y'all I read some statistics. 43% of the women, they, they, they do pornography too. 10, 20 years ago, it wasn't about 7 or 8%. Now it's 43%. And I told on the other night, you know, if women is 43, guess how much the men's are? And I don't know why people be looking up and like, let me tell you something. You know, you know, you know the richest entity in our world, pornography. The NFL, the NFL cannot hold a camera to how much money porn sites make. Isn't that, isn't that something? And, and then we don't want to say nothing about it in church. And the cunt crowd on your telephone is free. Amen. Amen. On your TV, free. Unless you play for Playboy. Pay for Playboy. Don't you? Yeah, you got to pay for Playboy. They didn't give you that free. (laughs) You got to watch Cinemite. You got to watch Showtime. You got to watch HBO. Because you know they do them late nights thing. Why look at y'all looking at me? Oh, my Lord. Lord. 
You know, if you're going to tell our stronghold, all of us got, all of us, I told you we depraved. I don't care how Holy Ghost fear you are, you must try to put pressure on one of them things unintentionally. Your curiosity is going to say, oh, what was that? You laugh because you know I'm telling the truth. And then you're going to be looking at it like it to my, oh, ooh, that's so nasty, but you ain't turned it yet. And after a while, they're going to get you hooked on it. Touch the neighbor, say stronghold. The devil do not tip you so he can tip you for one time. The devil's ultimate goal is to bind you. The thief cometh but for the steal, the kill, and destroy. That's why you got to be careful of stronghold. Watch what you love to do so much until it take away from your prayer time. Watch what you love to do so much until it take away from your study time. You do more with that than you do in your prayer time. You got to watch the enemy. Amen. And tell me I'm preaching good. And that scripture. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I want to be free. I want to be free indeed. I want to be free. Jesus has made me free, and I want to be free indeed. Hell, you got, I told you before, you got a lot of free people, but they ain't free indeed. Them guys that broke out of Africa tried, even though they were free from the prison, they still weren't free. Because FBI is still looking over their shoulders. They couldn't even go where they wanted to go. They got to hide out. Amen. You got a lot of Christians hiding out. Amen. But how many know when you're free, you're free indeed? When you get free indeed, you can pass by the things. Oh, shoot. Bop. You, when you get free indeed, sometimes, sometimes you have to do some stuff before you get free indeed. Don't, don't tell me, I, man, I just got to have my computer. If my computer called to me, Jesus got radical. I'm about to say something here. Jesus got really radical with some folk. And they say, and Jesus said it like this. He said, if your eye calls you to sin, what do? Pluck the bad boy out. Because it's better to go to heaven with what I. I know I'm preaching it. Now that, you know who preached that? Jesus preached that. Hey, touch that neighbor and say, that's radical right there. He said, pluck the bad boy out. Because it's better for you to get in into the God way of doing things than to, than to end up in hell. He said, listen to this. He said, if you got a hand on you, that can't help from stealing. What do you do? Take a knife and hack the ball off. Ain't, ain't that radical? Now, 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 you might want to say, not Jesus would actually, because some of y'all don't go up sticking stuff in your eye. <laughs> Talk about I'm going to sharpen this knife. I'm going to cut my... I want y'all coming to church with, with, with nerves. <laughs> because if, G, if, if he was just talking about that, how many know the right eye can see in too? So he wasn't talking about that. He, he wasn't talking about, he wasn't talking about just stick stuff in your hand up. No, Jesus wasn't talking about that. He was saying this. If these things, watch me now. If that computer calls me that I can't help but to turn it on, get rid of it. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's right, sister. Amen. <laughs> I got an amen coming. Mm -hmm. If whatever you're doing calls you to do that which you say you can't help yourself, get rid of the thing. That's good. I, mean, I can't do without my cell phone. That's a lie. Come on, Bishop. That's a lie. That's a lie. Now you can do without it. Look at some of y'all looking at me. I got to have my email. You ain't been having email all them all the other year. We did without email and all that. 
Some of the people, that's just, that just a time on the side. Listen, if you, listen, that's what Jesus said. And Jesus said, get radical enough to cut it off. If this job that I'm on, and I got to keep going and do this job, and this man ain't moving, this man that got me twisted and turned on, and I can't even do my job, find another job. I ain't got too many amen. 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 My boss man just looks so good to me. I can't even do my work. Find you another job. God, you know my family got to eat. You, you, got, to, you got to get delivered too. Your family won't be eating if you got full of strongholds. Amen. So the weapons of our warfare are not common. They're mighty through who? Through God. We got to, we got to do things through God's way of doing things. Can you shout amen? amen. Right, let me do my final text for the day, then I'm cutting off. Turn back to me, me Acts. Amen. Amen. Bring it, bring it, and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Can you shout amen? That thought world is submissive. Boy, I kind of like hate the mood. Ain't that thought world tough? Come on, I'm, I want to relate to you. Ain't that, that thought world is tough. That thought world will make you fall in love with people that don't love you. That thought world will make you fall in love with people that ain't got no, no good in mind with you. That thought world, that thought world, boy, is a mess. You got to start binding some stuff. And some people, and, and you know, young people, young people, you got to, you, 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 you got to watch. That enemy trying to, do he bind young folk? Because of their thinking. Amen. And what gives them depraved thinking? All the stuff we see. Everything come to us from the eye gate to the ear gate. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Amen. Everything. And it's the enemy's job. So you got to learn that you are in the flesh, but you don't want after the flesh. Yeah. Amen. If I'm going to get victory... If I'm going to get victory, then I got I to gotta pay attention to the scripture. Say amen. amen. Let me ask you a question. How many, how many of you here really do believe that you can get free and free indeed? I'm talking about free indeed. You ain't worried about how your flesh feel. When the flesh get, when the flesh get addicted, because that's what happens when strongholds come. An addiction takes place. Amen. And addiction comes from habits. Habits form character. Character projects your destiny. Are you hear me? You 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 gotta understand it. And then and then the enemy knows he keep on doing this. And see the reason why. You know, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. If we're ignorant of Satan's devices, he'll get an advantage over us. And all of us will be caught up. I can't do nothing without God's word. Without God's word, I am some. I'm done. Amen. Without, without God's word, I'm a done man. I'm done. I'm done. Take me home, Jesus. I can't work for you. I'm done. Amen. The only way I can make it is through his word. Not my strength. I know some of y'all, the Bible said, take heed to those of you that think you're strong. Come on, pray. Take heed to those of you that think you're strong. Let's say, any time, you're going you're gonna to fall to slip. Falls come to all of us. You know what a fall do for me? A fall do for me, it causes me to humble myself. Because when I think that that thing can't handle me, and I fall into it, God, dog, it makes me humble myself. Amen. Amen. It makes me say, okay, God. Okay. I get like Peter got. You know how Peter got? Peter, Peter said, not me. I never deny you. No, the rest of them boys might, but not me. You can't have no confidence in the flesh. You got to get in the word. Amen. I wonder if I'm talking to any people in here. Anybody, in any, any people, that peoples of God that you don't put for the effort and, and, then, and then find out the very thing that you put for the effort not to do, find yourself doing it. And you, you already knew that was wrong. You already knew it. Some people be looking at folks about they knew better. You too. Everybody knew better. How can they do that? How can they? How can they do what? 
How can they fall into what? We're depraved people. Understand that from the scripture point of view. That's why the scripture talks about him in the book of Romans. Paul was a man of God, and I can't find a believer probably in the whole scripture that was more more radical and more committed to the thing of God than Paul and he said when I wanted to do good evil were present with me some people think they were stronger than Paul I wouldn't even put myself in that kind of category he said I find them he said when I wanted to do good I find them a law that was in me that's why you got to start understanding the kind of Law that working in our life. I find a law in me, a law, a principle. That's scripture, in that scripture. That when I want to do, do good, another law rise up in me and bring me into captivity to things that I didn't want to do. So he said, the only way I find my freedom, therefore, def, therefore there is now no condemnation to them that are in. Christ Jesus, to those that totally depend on him, totally that know that I, God, Lord, if you don't help me, I can't do it. Lord, if, I, if, if you don't strengthen me, I can't do it. I'm telling you, if you're ever going to get free, you're going to have this testimony. Some people think they're free, but they ain't free yet. But if you're ever going to get free, you're going to have this testimony. Lord, I can't do nothing. If I'm going to do it, I've got to do it in you. Amen. Lord, because if, if, if it's on me, if, if, it, if, it, if it's just up to me by myself, if them thousand dollars on that thing and nobody didn't see me. <laughs> see how that flesh, and, then, and you saved, and you love Jesus. And you, nobody don't know nothing about them, 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 them thousand dollars. And said, get it. Especially if you have the type of knowledge that you know nobody, you think nobody won't miss it. And you know it ain't none of yours. It take character to say, no, I ain't no mess with that. It take a man or a woman that's in God to say, ain't no mess with that. Come on. And, and then, then when you're in God, when you're in God, and when you're in God, that flesh is going to be saying, oh, man, you missed a good choice, man. You missed a good chance, man. Man, just imagine how many bills just can pay off. Many times we can't walk in victory because we don't understand the warfare. When you start understanding the warfare, you can walk, you can walk a little light. Because you know just as sure if you are saved, you know, and, and, and don't be talking about the devil all the time. The Bible says, if any man, let no man say, no woman say, when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. For when every man or woman is tempted, they are drawn away of them. So your neighbor said, you got some lust in you. That's not like God. I know you don't want nobody to know because you want everybody to think you're holy. And we are holy. And we are God's people. And we are God's children. But if you don't understand the depravity of, our, of, of, our, of, of us being human beings, you will never learn how to fight in the warfare. Say amen. amen. Sometimes I start shouting when I see my crazy self want some stuff that I know I can't have. Sometimes I do, I get rejoiced for. I start praising God. I say, God, because if I, nah, there was a day when I didn't understand the warfare. I'm still trying to, oh, I can't do that. I go on a fast. You know what? You can't even fast your way out of that. I'm going to pray all night. You can pray all night and that flesh still ain't satisfied. You're going to hear a word from God. God be going to talk to you. I mean, your spirit be uplifted and all of that. But then, then your flesh still want that. I know. But hey, say amen. But if you're going to be free, you got to know how to get free. Can you say amen? Understand who you are. Don't let people dictate who you are. Know that you are a son or daughter of God and walk in him. I can't do nothing without you. Every day that ought to be your prayer. I can't do it without you. You know how crazy I am. Come here. I'm going to help somebody get free. You got to break stronghold. 
Touch the neighbor and say, strongholds can be broken. I ain't got to walk right here with all this lust in me. I ain't got to walk right here with all this bitterness in me. I ain't got to walk right here with all this unforgiveness in me. I ain't got to walk right here with this crazy passion in me. I can love people. People that I don't like, I can love them. I'm going to love you till I start liking you. How much you say, Robert? Robert, I'm going to love you till I start liking you. Can this out of man? Somebody brought me, I love you, but I don't like you. If you keep loving them enough, you'll like them. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. This is, this is a miracle working thing. Everything God gives you power to do is a miracle. Y'all didn't hear me. Yeah, but I, if, if God gave you the strength to do it, it's a miracle. There is no way I can love people that are trying to hurt me. How am I going to do it out of my own nature? No way I can do it. But if I do it in him, can this out amen? It'll, do, it'll make me do what Jesus preached on the mount, on the, on the mount on, 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 when he was on the mount and he taught the Beatitudes. Can this out amen? He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are they. Blessed are you. He, the scripture talks about happy is that man that when a man, when somebody else do evil things against him. Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your way. How am I going to do that? How am I going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad when I know a person trying to kill me? I know they don't like me. They did some stuff to me so I won't get that house. I know that they prejudice. They didn't give me that position because they didn't like the color I am. God said, love them. <laughs> Touch that neighbor and say, you know that's divine, divine, divine. But you know what? We can do it. God never tell us to do nothing that we can't do. But we can't do it in our own strength. Please, Bishop, you can't do it in your own strength. You got to do it only in him. Boy, I'm a free man. I love it. Kidney shot. I got this thing. That's why I can preach it like this. I got it. Kidney shot. Amen. Only if I'm going to get free, I got to get free in him. I got to constantly renew my mind. Love the word of God. Know that I cannot do it in my own strength. I can't, I can't love people in my own strength. I can't even love my wife in my own strength. I can't love folk in my own strength. But if I do it because I love him, then he'll give me the ability to do what he has commanded me to do. Have you ever walked around with people hating on you, you loving them? <laughs> That's a miracle. That's a miracle. I've heard some people say, well, Bishop, what if I go to these people and I ask them to forgive me? And they don't accept my apology. And then they walk and say, well, well, then they get attitude. Uh, yeah. No, if you're going to get free, you can't let nobody people that are not free get you back bound. Hmm. There ain't nothing else you can do. And you know what? If you really are free, then you know it. You feel, you feel a lot of passion for that person. Because you know that that person is bound. And you, you ain't mad at them. You passionate for them. Matter of fact, your heart is broken over them. Because you know, you know that the enemy is destroying their lives. Amen. And it, make, and it makes you, when you operate out of that kind of love, it makes you pray for those folk. Can I say amen? amen? All right, let me end. I'm quick. Acts 27 chapter. Let me finish this on this. Amen. Every time I get in that verse of scripture right there, I can't hardly move. Gee, that's a powerful scripture, isn't it? Casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it to captivity. Amen. Unto the obedience of the cross. Isn't that good? God said we can do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, if God said we can do it, we can do it. Come on, preach to him and say, stop looking at your flesh. Stop depending on your flesh. Stop depending on your mindset. And get in him. And let him know the only way I can do this is that you help me. Amen. Amen. Got to help me to do it. Amen. And when I tell him he got to help me to do it, that means I want to do it. Did you get that? 
I said, when I come to him and say, God, you got to help me to do it, then I'm letting him know, Lord, I want to do it. And I just don't say it one time, I confess it, I want to do it. Amen. 27 chapter. I finish on this. I finish on this note. Uh, Paul here now is he's he's in the perfect will of God, and he is on his way to Rome because now God has raised this man up, so he got to preach to Rome. At this particular time, in scripture Rome Rome was ruler of the world. Rome, the Romans. And now God actually raising the apostle Paul up to go preach this gospel to, to Rome. While he's on his way to Rome, on a ship, listen what happens to him. A storm comes. A storm comes. Look at the 14th verse. But not long after there arose against it a, a temporous wind, tempestuous wind called Eroclodon. Okay? That's called Eroclodon. Uh, this, this was like a hurricane. This storm was like a hurricane uh, uh, um, blowing in all directions. Eroclodon, that's what that means. It says, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. In other words, he done got, watch this now, this hurricane comes, and now they have no control of the ship. Now, where, where, where did the Holy Spirit commission them to go? To Rome. But now, in the midst of his mission, he has no control. The enemy has come in and tried to take control. Did you get me? Sometimes the enemy has come into our lives, and you think, and you think, that there is no way out. But all God wants you and I to do is trust him. Seem like ain't no way out. Seem like you done lost control. But if you trust God, God will bring you to your destiny. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he has to change his mind. Other words, if God has commissioned you for a certain destiny, Regardless of what come in your life, it can't stop you. Amen. Now Paul is in an uncontrollable situation. Amen. But the will of God was for him to go to Rome. Amen. Now, let's skip down. 19 verse. And the third day we cast out with our own hand the titan of the ship. He had to, throw, they had to throw some stuff off the ship. The thing had got so bad, they don't know where they are. They don't know where they are in the midst of that. And some of you are getting in life, sometimes you don't know where you are. But I come to tell you today, regardless of where you are in life, all you got to do is trust God. Amen. Now, let's look at 22nd verse. Watch Paul. I, I, I'm trying to get to this word that Paul gave him. Look at the 21st verse. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, watch this, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exalt you to be of good cheer. For, watch this now. Watch this word. For there shall no loss of any man's life among you. But the ship. In other words, the ship going to be lost, but no man is going to die. Watch the third, 23rd verse. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever you go through, God got a word, and he says, stay on the ship. Can they shout amen? Stay on the ship. Amen. You need a word from God. I know it's going to get tough, but you need a word from God. 
If you ever gonna, if you ever gonna fulfill the destiny God has for you in your life, you need a word from God. Say amen. amen. Paul said, "Now listen, I told you what to do back there, but since you disobeyed, how many know God is faithful? God is graceful. God, God is a God of another chance, and another chance, and, and another chance. And somebody says, second chance, uh, uh, and another chance." And another chance. So God, now, this, he said, now, this, this night, God, the angel of the Lord stood by me and told me to tell you, don't you abandon the ship. Oh, that's good stuff. My testimony is this. I was talking to a sister. We were doing the Q-Fest. We were doing the Q-Fest. And, you know, I, I, had, I, was, I was right around, I was doing something. But I, I ran into this sister. And she looked at me and she said, Bishop. She started laughing. She said, Bishop, I hadn't given up. And I, don't, I haven't given up. And done, you know, and, and my heart went out for her. Because it looked like, you know, it, it, looked like, it looked like she put forth effort and she strived to try to get in God's will. And then, then all of a sudden, then she go back in the same thing. She fall back out again. I saw my heart went out for her. As I, was, as I was studying for this lesson, and I was reading this story. I wasn't studying for this lesson, but I was reading this story. And I thought about that. I thought about the word that God gave to Paul. And I told her, I said, listen, I said, I'm praying for you. But you know what? I told her, I said, you got to stay on the ship. You can't keep abandoning the ship, time the ship look like it's going to get broken to pieces. You can't, you can't, you can't. Time things look like it ain't going to where you wanted to go. There you go. Stop coming to church. Stop bringing your kids. Stop doing this. You know, people can't even find you. How you going to win like that? And, and I ministered to her right there in the park. I don't know where it was. Park or the gym. Somewhere it was. I said, how you going to win? I said, I, I see you and I believe you love God. But you got to put on some, you got to put on some fortitude. You, 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 you got to have, a, you got to have a, a, an attitude about, you know, what you want God to do in your life. And stop allowing in it and everything. Look at, look, look at this, look at this story. Paul was in, in the perfect will of God going to Rome, and here it comes, Eroclodon by name, which, which was, which was uh, uh, the same word, a hurricane came and devoured the ship. You could have read the, the next two verses. But what Paul told him, he said, now the ship going to be destroyed, destroyed. Watch this now. Watch the word that come from God. The ship going to be destroyed. Now check this out. But stay on the ship. I'm going to stay on the ship and the ship going to be destroyed? That don't make no sense. Like to me, I need to go for it. That's in the natural. For, for we don't walk in the flesh. Amen. For we depend. For, 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 we, for we only depend on what God said. Can they shout amen? He said, now tell everybody, don't abandon the ship. So after a while, they start throwing stuff off the ship, trying to make it light so they can go, so they can move. Hmm. That didn't work. Hurricane came, and it totally destroyed the ship. And the text, I'd like to see that last verse. On the, what my last verse I read? What verse was that? 44. Pull up 44 for me. Watch Paul. Watch this. 40, 44. Mm -hmm. It said, and the rest, watch this. And the rest, some on boards. Touch your neighbor and say, you're going to come over on broken planks. Just don't get off the ship. Amen. Look at that. Say they got saved. Some on boards and some on broken pieces. Okay. Okay. Can you say hallelujah? Oh, my God, that's good to me. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Just like God's word said it, where well, no life going to be taken. Hey, it, it, nobody's going to die in the midst of this. It's going to be a storm, a hurricane going to come. But God said you won't perish in the midst of it. Can you say amen? Go ahead and tell your neighbor, say, hey, neighbor, I know storms going to come. But they can't kill you. Trials only come to make you strong. Can they say hallelujah? Your miracle will turn into a message. Just imagine the message that they had after they went through a rock done. They can look back and tell everybody how God brought them through the storm. Can they say amen? 
how God brought us through the storm. Don't quit in life. Whatever comes in life. Know that whatever God has said on our life. I'm a happy man. I, I am. I'm, amen. Whatever God has spoken over our life, it got to come to pass. Can this out? Amen. Listen, and it's not determined on by how strong I am. It's just my dependency in him. I can do all things through Christ that, that strengthened me. Can this out? Hallelujah. Rest on your feet. Give God some praise.